Konnichiwa. Freddy-san, Bernsie's in Japan. Time for me to go and see what life's like in Japan. Freddy-san, Bernsie's in Japan. So come on, let's go see what Bernsie's up to in Japan. Jim, I'm in the shape of my life, mate. Well, I have seen some stuff. Keep it raw. Jim. Have you got a bum bag on? Have you got, have you, mate, you know, have you got a jock strap on? Have you got a jock strap on? I'm fucking flying, mate. I'm fucking flying. Well, for Freddie san Konnichiwa and all that. Um, how is Japan and whereabouts in Japan are you? We've had a few discussions, but I still do not know what part of Japan you are in. Right. At the minute, Jim, it's your morning. So it's actually, you should say a hi or mask, which is good morning. How are you? Um, mask. Don't say mask. Mate. And, it, and it's my evening. It's my evening here, so I'd say konbanwa, which means good evening. Konbanwa? So, uh, yeah, konbanwa. Um, yeah, mate, it's all good. Um, games have started, so I'm happy. Uh, and I'm based pretty much just outside a place called Nagoya, which is Japan's fourth largest city. And it's pretty much slap bang between Osaka and Tokyo. So if I could travel, it would be perfect. But at the minute, I can't, so I'm... Um, just sort of training away and, and trying to keep in shape. Are you at a penthouse suite in Nakasara? I don't think they exist, man. I think they call this the shoebox suite, mate. I think it's um, no, to be fair, it, it's not too bad, mate. I've got a three bedroom apartment, it's me on my own, so plenty of space. Uh, and you don't need much space here, mate. Just a nice sofa, a bit of TV, and, and that's that's me pretty happy. We can talk about how things are going, but firstly, let's just rewind when the opportunity came up to go to Japan. A uh, big move. We don't see many people from the UK, and there's been a, a, a more recently George Cruz, good mate of mine, being being one of them who's obviously playing out there. But for yourself personally, out of all the places in the world, Freddie Burns has ended up in Japan. How did that come about? Uh, well, towards you, Jim, yeah, you know, we've had many discussions um, over podcasts about. How, how things went for me at Bath and I kind of reached a bit of a stalemate and my stock was probably br- pretty low, Jim, in all honesty, um, to stay in the UK and play. There was nothing that really excited me and then um, Toyota Industry Corporation, Shocky Shuttles, which is the team that I play for now. Uh, got Shocky t- Shuttles? Shocky Shuttles? Shocky Shuttles, mate, yeah. Um, try and say that 10 times fast. Uh, Shocky Shuttles, sh- 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 yeah, yeah, best not. What are they? What, what, what company are they? Toyota. Oh, they are Toyota. Yeah, so that that we're we're the we're the poor boys Toyota because you've got um, Toyota Industry Corporation Shocky Shuttles, and you've got Toyota the Blitz, which is where Kieran Reed, Larue, and the lads, um, where the lads are. Rupert. Yeah, we're, we're all the lads are, mate. So we actually trained against them last week. I mean, it was class, rocked up, beautiful facility on top of a hill, four um, G pitch, rugby pitch, nice clubhouse stuff like that. We literally train at the back of the dustbins in in Korea, mate, which is where I'm where I'm based. But um, no, mate, just the opportunity come up. I thought, you know what? In, in in short terms, I just thought, fuck it. Like it's you know it's an opportunity that I probably wouldn't get. Uh, COVID was just kicking off, so I thought like it was the, the perfect time to get out here. Um, so in some ways, probably financially, it was a great idea to come out here. Um, but from actually seeing the country and getting to experience it for what it is. Uh, probably timing wasn't wasn't the best, but mate, it's going all right. Um, I was expecting to be playing in the top league, but I'm in the challenge league, so uh, in with a bit of the a bit of the bin juice, mate. But you can't change it now. It's, it's part of it, and yeah, just trying to make the most. No fair play to you. Give us an outlay of how the season's meant to look uh, in normal times, and then maybe how it actually looks now. So, how many teams are in the league, and how you get promoted, and and and, and all that stuff. I'm currently in a pool of five teams. Um, so we've got Qden, Chuden, Coca Cola, and Mazda in our in, in my group. Um, Hang on, go through them again. So I've heard Mazda and Coca Cola. They sound legendary. Coca Cola would be class to play for. Who are the other one? Chuden uh, and Chuden. Chuden and Qden. They've got. I think it's Chuden Red Red Lions, and I don't know what Qden are, but 
we played we played those two teams at the minute. One was sixty. We won sixty one twenty eight against Q Den, and then ninety points to twelve against Q Den, mate. So. Um, Maybe they had the rule if they keep it under 100, they're allowed to go out to some karaoke bars after then. Mate, I think that's what the crack the poor lads came up. They, we had to play the game. The game got moved to our training ground, Jim. So we actually played the game at our training ground. It was, I put a few clips on Instagram, but it was uh, a game, a, a professional rugby game that I've never seen like it. Uh, uh, unbelievable. But yeah, we got the win. So the big one's Coca Cola next week. <laughs> This is mental, Coca-Cola. I know. So the, the, I know. the team that you put 90 points on, which I don't even yeah. think, I don't know what the highest scoring game ever in, in the world's ever been, but were they children or were they actually fully-fledged lads? Mate, so they'd just been promoted into the Challenge League, but they were, you know, they, they had some big boys, um, but it was, yeah, it, this is the thing in Japan that I'm learning quite fast. Like, even in the top league, you look at, um, so Bowden Barrett's team, Suntory Sun Goliath, you know, our, our old mate Sav's team, um, they beat Dinobors, Mitsubishi Dinobors, uh, 75-7 at the weekend in the opening round. No, so a team of like, dinosaurs. Team of dinosaurs, though. Exactly, mate. But there's just huge goals. There's huge dinosaurs. goals between them. How is the COVID situation there? So you'll be watching things... Over here in the UK, um, there's obviously no fans in the stadium. If you're French, you can walk around with your willy and hanging out the top of your mask. And you look at the Super Rugby that's been played this um, over this weekend. This will be the first week of the Super Rugby. They've got fans in stadiums. It looks absolutely class. So Japan being halfway between the two, arguably closer to the Southern Hemisphere, um, what kind of state is it in terms of the COVID? Are there fans at games? Are you ever had to wear masks? Like, can you socialise with people? So we're so currently Japan's actually not too bad. Like, it, it, it's COVID's got worse, and there's been state of emergencies in a couple of the the prefectures, which is the same as you know, like your counties in England. Um, but we are, yeah, we're under strict because we have company workers in our team, so you know two thirds of the team go and work in the factory. We can't risk them getting COVID and taking a whole factory down. So we're under pretty strict rules here as a team. You know, there's actually restaurants are open, bars and clubs are open. They're not as full as they were, but since uh, New Year's Eve, we've not been, we've not been allowed to go out. So it's pretty much training, supermarket and home um, for us at the minute. But in terms of fans, it's a bit frustrating. The top league are allowed fans in. We, after the Coca-Cola game, so the Mazda game, we're allowed fans in from then. So we've got another game, one more game um, behind closed doors. Uh, and then, and then it's, it's all go. So hopefully, hopefully we'll get a good crowd and, and those games will be quite important that we will have the crowd in because I think after the World Cup, they registered a couple of sort of 50, 60,000 capacity games over here before COVID. Um, so it'd be great to get a few games in it with the crowd mate because you know like as people have been watching it's pretty shit without any crowd and just you know it just feels like a bit of a training game rather than a, a full-blown fixture what about fielding players so you've got some of the lads who are working in the factories all day you're sat at home with your blanket watching tv watching netflix and the highlight of your day is going to the supermarket what about when it comes to fielding a 15 or a squad because from what I've learned before is there's some regulations around or some rules or laws around how many foreigners you can play. Yeah, so it's it's quite um it's it's quite confusing. So of course, of, of, of course. Of course it mate, it's, uh, one thing I've learned, right? <laughs> Japan for a, for, a, for I want to, I hope this is the right word for a techno technologically advanced country, right? I, I've got a toilet that wipes my own ass, Jim, right? But they can't work out how to structure a league system in rugby. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's crazy. It is a clean-off country. But, um, yeah, in terms, of, in terms of the teams, uh, you are allowed five foreign players, so five not, non-passport holders uh, in your match day. Uh, it, uh, on the field at one time, sorry. Let me get that right. On the field at one time. But you're only allowed two internationally capped players okay so you get one of two things you get you get teams that have a lot of 
foreigners, but they're passport holders. You know, we we've got a couple, uh, we've got a couple of lads who are from uh, Fijian, Samoan um, sort of background, and they've been over here so long. They've got a Japanese passport. They've not been capped for another country. Therefore, they are classed as Japanese. Um, so, also, if you have a sevens player in your squad, you get an extra foreigner. So, we actually have a, one of the Japanese sevens boys in our squad. That means that wow. we're, we're technically allowed to field six uh, foreigners on the pitch, uh, but still only two cap players. So, it's, it's not about putting your best team out. It's about trying to upskill your, your Japanese boys and, and trying to work it so that your foreigners and, and your influential players are, are on the field for as long as you can. But All I know is if they get another injury, they'll have to bring John Amo in, who's the cleaner on the third floor of the... Sh- what, what's it called? The shuttles. Shuttles, shuttles mate. The sh- the, on the, in the shuttles factory. Um, if that wasn't confusing, if that wasn't confusing enough for Eddie... Uh, the language. Now, I saw you on social media going about your business uh, the early part of lockdown, trying to learn the language, which is very good of you to do that, to go out there. I remember playing in France and I just got the piss taken out of me every time I tried to say, je suis fatigué, which means I'm tired every day. How is the language um, and how confusing has that been, both from a living perspective, but also a playing perspective? perspective being a fly half who needs to know all the calls <laughs> great Pick. So, for, so first and foremost mate i did a load of lessons and they just didn't help me whatsoever i got out here i was shocking and then i did the worst thing ever when i did an introduction video for the for the squad i got a little japanese man to hold a piece of paper underneath the camera for me <laughs> proper showbiz style mate and i read it and suddenly all these all these, all these articles are writing about how brilliant it is that I've learned Japanese and I'm there thinking, fucking hell, I'm going to have to go back home and people are going to be like, ah, oh, you know, konnichiwa, gege desu ka, and all this sort of stuff and I'm just not going to have anything to do with it, but. Konnichiwa, watashi wa Freddy des, nihon ni kareta koto shuttles no daihyo ni narita koto wo meyo ni omoimasu Season more Tanoshimi ni shite imas. Mate, the language is hard. Um, we got two translators, Ken and Yuhi, who, who literally Ken will sit next to me in a meeting, and as the coach is talking, he will uh, he'll whisper in my ear what is what's being said. Uh, they're also the water boys gym, so if I need to say anything on a match day, I can't just say it in a huddle. I have to wait for the huddle to come. The water boys come on. I say what I have to say, and then they um, translate it. But then also, mate, there's just ridiculous things. So over here, I don't get it. Right? So there, certain letters they can't pr- so their L's they say like R's, likewise like R's with L's and all this sort of stuff. Okay, so we have we have um, a call where a ten kicks in. It's called wood. Okay, so if I say wood, that means I want the ball to kick it, all right? Our Japanese nine, Kato, who speaks a little bit of English, looks at me and he goes, uh, Freddy, wood, wood. Kick it out. And I'm like, out. Well, yeah, I'm like, I'll, I'll be honest with you, mate. I'm like, you fuck, you fuck, you what, mate? He's like, Oud. Kick it out, Oud. out, he's saying out. I'm like, Ken. And then Ken's like, Ken's like, what, what's he saying? I said, Ken, what's he saying? He goes, oh, he's saying wood. And I was like, oh, wood, yeah. And he goes, and he, and he went, Watashi, which means that like, I, like me. So if you say Watashi, and I'm like, so you can say Watashi with a W in front of it, but you can't say fucking wood. Like, it doesn't make sense, Jim. How do you so what, know? So what does wood mean? Wood means that I'm going to kick it, Jim. <laughs> but so I'm saying wood, and he can say, how could someone say Watashi and not wood? Yeah, so I'll tell you, Jim, we've got, we got props, right? We've got loads of props, okay? There's one, I, I thought, I did my thing. I got a little bit of a squad list and I looked at the names of the props of the pictures just so I kind of knew, right? So you've got this guy, his name's spelled G-U-N, right? Jim, what's G-U-N G- spell? Come on. Gun. Yeah, gun, right? So I'm like, oh, gun, sweet, happy days. I, I, could, I couldn't really, this is the first few days, I couldn't really match up the names, you know what? It's like his name's Gun. Country, everyone looks his, name, his, his, his no, name's no. Gun. Well, 
we'll get to that, Jim, right? So I didn't know who it was. Next night, I got outside to train, and every time this bloke got the ball, they're all going, goon, goon, goon. And I'm like, mate, you Who's can't call someone a fucking goon. Well, exactly, you can't call someone a goon nowadays. You just can't do it. I'm like, who? so I go to Ken, call Ken, Ken, translator, come on. Ken, who the fuck is his goon? name Ken? Oh. Is his name Ken or not? Mate, the translator's called Ken. No, the translator's called Ken. The, the the bloke's called the bloke's called Goon, but it's spelled G U N Gun. So I'm there calling him Gun. He never he never unless I call him a Goon, a fucking Goon. He don't even look at me, Jim. I was like that for about four days. I was like Gun, Gun, and he never passed me the ball. Wouldn't even look at me. Started calling him a Goon, and he's but Jim, you are right. So here's our props names, right? We've got Goon, we've got Mizuno. We've got Gucci, we've got Hero, we've got Zawa, and then we've got Bob. <laughs> <laughs> is Bob Japanese or not? Is, is Bob working mate, as the cleaner? He, he's Stonewall Japanese, mate. Honestly. No, he's not. He, he, you haven't got a Japanese bloke. You've got one called, right. called Mizuno and one called Bob. No chance. Mate, I'm, I'm going to get you the bit. I am going to get you. The, the squad pictures of the boys, and I'm going to show you Bob. Let's put the picture of Bob up. Mate, honestly, I was like that. They have all these hard names. The one name I could get is Bob. So, Freddie Burns, these episodes are brought to the millions by Budgie Smuggler, and every week we're going to be giving away a pair of Budgie, Buddy Smugglers, right? Get it? So, Buddy, Budgie, it's got a bit of a rhyme to it. So every week, you've got to pick out a teammate, right? Someone that's a good lad, someone that's done a good deed, um, who is a good player, maybe player of the week. Yeah. And Freddie san will be patched all over them. There'll be a custom-made pair for one of your teammates, which will be the Budgie Buddy of the week. Nice. So you yeah, get it? So you get what we're doing here? I get it. I get it. I give, I give my buddy some budgies. You give your buddy some budgies, Freddy Sand style. I said, Who's your budget buddy? I want to know, I want to know. I said, Who's your budget buddy? Yeah. Freddy, this week, who have we got to give away the custom made Freddy Sand budgies to? Do you know what? I had a little think about this, and I'm actually going to give it to uh, a foreigner who plays here. Uh, he's, he's a. He's a Aussie slash Kiwi, played a bit of super rugby, a guy called Levi Almua, right? Now, Levi... He sounds good. He sounds good. So, yeah, so he's, he's a very good player. But Levi was ill uh, just before we got put into lockdown. So he had 10 days ill, like non-COVID related ill. And then he came back for one day and then we got put in two weeks lockdown. He's a centre and he came back at, I think it was about 124 kegs, mate. He made a line break, Jim, and I've never seen anyone move so slow in my life, yet he was just batting these poor little Japanese players off him. Like, it was, he was like, um, he was like uh, one of those trolls in, in uh, Lord of the Rings or something, mate. Just literally moving as slow as you can imagine and was just, at one point, I think he got tired, so he actually turned and started running back towards us, batting people off, mate. So, that's the play. I remember just laughing at him on the pitch, being like, "You're an absolute joke, mate." So he can have uh, he can have the budgy buddy man player of the week. He can, and let's hope they fit, Levi. Make sure they're big pair, please. <laughs> can eat you And they just have to work their way around this square, and the first one to hit the other one wins. But obviously. <laughs> It's a relatively big square, Jim. So some boys are like a broken toy up against the wall, just trying, like just swinging randomly, and then suddenly they'll just clock one of them and everyone will run. Yeah. 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 Yeah.